Hey everybody, thanks for tuning back into OTRAM's YouTube channel. Today we're going to do rear pads and rotors on a GX470. So let me move you around to the back side and we'll get started. So the first thing we're going to do is take off these two 17 millimeter headed bolts that hold the caliper on. And I've already loosened everything because I already did the other side. Those come out pretty easy. And then you can just take and wiggle your caliper off. We're gonna set it upside down here on the axle. A lot of times I'll use caliper hanger hooks. Um, these actually sit on the axle pretty nice so you don't need to worry about it. And then we'll take the caliper mount bolts out and watch out, there's washers on there that will fall off. We just slide the whole assembly with the pads and everything as one piece. Stick it over here and then come back around here to the front side. We can just wiggle the rotor off. If the rotor doesn't come off easily like that, There's a corresponding hole in the rotor that matches with this. You can lower it down to here. And if you look through, there's an adjuster that you can back off with a screwdriver through the hole. And I'll show you how that works once we put everything back together and we have to adjust it. Um, I'm gonna do the parking brakes on this real quick. I'm not doing a video on that because I can't edit that much swearing out of a video. Uh, but let me get those all set up and then we'll come back and finish everything up. Okay, so I went ahead and did the parking brake and parking brake cables. I didn't film those. Uh, there's just no way I'd get a good video of that. Um, but I've got the rotor back on here. I've got three nuts just finger tight holding it. And then you'll see this hole in the, in the rotor. You put that at about the six o'clock position. And if you take, if you take a thin Phillips screwdriver, you can fish it in there and you can catch the little sprocket and work it tooth by tooth. And you work it until it tightens all the way up against the rotor and you can't turn anything. And then you tooth by tooth go backwards eight teeth and then make sure that when you spin it you don't have any dragging you don't have any sound um, and then you'll want to pull your parking brake make sure it locks tight and you may have to do a dance like pull the parking brake adjust adjust the handle adjust back here and do a dance until you get everything happy um, I've already adjusted this I tried getting a picture of the sprocket in there um, but didn't have any luck. But basically, it's one of these little stars. And as you're, you know, doing it with the screwdriver, you're turning it, and it's threading this adjuster in and out. Uh, so that's adjusting your parking brake shoes. Whenever you change the rotors, you need to reset the brake shoes. And then I've got everything cleaned up. I like to take the caliper brackets and where all the little shims go, I sandblast those just to make sure there's no rust, anything that's gonna make it tight. You could take a file, wire brush, um, sandblaster just makes it fast and easy. And then I take a little bit of brake caliper grease and just coat the surfaces where those shims go just to seal them and seal the back of the shim to make sure everything stays uh, rust free and slides easily. And then I realize I didn't show taking the shims out, but they just pop into these grooves like so. And there's a couple different ones. You got to flip them around. If you got to flip them around, you'll end up with all four of them in there. And you just want to make sure they sit in there nice. No, 
no crooked, no having to hammer them in there or anything because that's what your brake pads are going to slide in. So you don't want anything that's going to restrict that. And then I also took just a nylon bristle brush on a drill and cleaned out my guides just to make sure there's no cruddy old grease in there. I just knocked the plug out of the end. There's a little rubber plug that goes in the end here that I popped out. So once you've got that all taken care of, you can just slide the caliber bracket back on here, move around to the back here, and then we can take our hardware we took off earlier. And I ran all these, ran all the hardware through the ultrasonic cleaner. Just get any grease and grime off of it. It's not essential, it just makes a little bit nicer job. And then these inside ones torque to 77 foot pounds. There we go. And then we just need to retract our caliper because right now the piston's sticking out. And before you do this, you want to check the brake fluid level in the master to make sure it's not all the way full. Because <laughs> if it is, when you push these back, you'll overflow the master and spill everywhere. And I'm getting ahead of myself. We gotta put brake pads on there first. Won't stop while that breaks. And these just slide. Into those shims. Like so. Then you can slide your caliper back over. And then we're gonna take disc brake grease and grease these pins as well to make sure they slide easily. And you've gotta kinda of finagle these through the dust boots. Tighten those up. And these go to 65 foot-pounds. And then, again, you'll want to spin Spin everything to make sure you don't have any binding, dragging. I usually will hit the brakes a couple of times, come back down here and spin again, just to make sure I don't have a sticking cowlip or anything. Uh, but that's rear pads and rotors on a GX470. Hope you found that useful, and I'll catch you again soon. Thanks.